morning, everyone. Happy Vlogmas day 12. Oh, day 12. We're halfway through. Hold on. Let me fix my camera. All right. So I'm clearly in my living room. Sorry about all the backlit. Um, got the windows behind me. Um, okay. It's Saturday. I am sitting here watching, catching up on some Vlogmas videos that I'm watching. Currently watching Christy Russell. Actually, <laughs> currently watching. She, um, I'm behind um, a few days and she's talking about um, questions that she's gotten of why she's never in lounge where and then she was just kind of talking about you know makes her feel better to be dressed and you know spending all this money on our homes to decorate them and then to be dressed sloppy in them that it just seems to be a disservice and um how she just likes to be put together all the time just makes her feel better she only really wears lounge wearing sweats instead if she's just feeling really down or she's not feeling well which <laughs> i'm sitting here in my sweats and i'm like oh yeah i could i could see that um, anyway, I thought it was kind of funny. Um, I mean, I agree. I actually, I do agree with what she's saying, especially in this 2020 year. Um, but yeah, I'm currently sitting here in a pair of my Fortuna joggers from the So Beautiful book and this, um, Sloan sweater, Love Notion Sloan sweater, um, that I remade from another thrifted, uh, sweatshirt. But I wanted to show you, I'm sitting here, um, knitting and I want to show you this hat. I am so obsessed with this hold on my my uh very alert assistant sitting here oh my gosh guys look at this so this is the tartan uh toque and tube by tracy miller and um i'm doing the she also has a sweater pattern or a uh, mitten pattern that goes with the same pattern uh that i think i'm going to do next before i do the cowl i just want to make sure i have enough uh, yarn but i Look at that. And there's an option to do these baubles if you want. Um, there'll be three rows when all is said and done. I'm so glad I decided to do them. I was a little nervous about them, but oh my gosh, isn't this cute? So there's the bottom of the hat. And I've had to be, because I'm doing color work. And I've only ever done color work on that soundtrack sweater that I've done. And I'm trying to remember to be very loose with my um, colors that are going around to the back there so that I can make sure I have a large head that this is gonna be able to stretch over my head. But I am just loving, loving this so much. Anyway. So anyway, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just sitting here, it's like 11 o'clock now. Um, you know, I've made everyone breakfast, cleaned up breakfast, and now I'm just sitting here in my living room by myself. Everyone's off doing their own thing, watching Vlogmas and knitting, and it is heavenly. This is what I needed this morning. <laughs> just to recharge. I do really want to get into the sewing room later today, but for right now, this is, I'm just so relaxed. So, um, yeah, I will, uh, catch and, uh, catch back up with you guys a little bit later. Look, I finished it. Sorry, that is here. Let me just flip the camera around. <laughs> That's not a great way to look at it. There we go. I finished my hat. Look at it. I'm so glad I did the little baubles that are on there. Okay, as you can imagine, I um, spent most of the day doing this. Um, I mean, not really. I made chicken pot pie, a gluten-free chicken pot pie for my family. Um, my husband and I went on a nice long walk today. Um, we dropped um, our son off at a friend's house. He needs to be picked up here in the next couple of hours. He's playing with a good buddy. Um, but I, I just got like addicted to this because there was so much counting and making sure that you stayed on track and yada, 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 that, um, pom -pom, that I, um, yeah, I just kept, you know, every time I would stop and, oh, I have laundry that I need to switch over. <laughs> See, I also forget about laundry. Oh, look, I also put my um, bomber jacket on my girl. <laughs> um, she's not naked anymore. Um, anyway, so I just kept going back and forth to this, um, when, you know, after I was done doing whatever little chore, that kind of thing around the house. So I did no sewing, obviously. However, I think now that I've finished the hat, um, I still have the cowl and the mittens that I want to do, but I may wait and cast onto those like later in the week. So I think tomorrow I'm going to finish my recital blouse. And then now that I've knit the hat, I really want the coat that goes with it. So I think I'm going to sneak the Ramana in. Um, you know, I was kind of going back and forth, maybe doing the pajamas, but I just really am feeling the coat. So, um, I'm actually, I think tonight going to uh, dig around and see if I can, um, I'm pretty sure I still have the pattern. Sometimes when I am downsizing, I mean, I keep my PDF patterns that I'm going to make again, 
that I know that I'm going to make again. Um, otherwise, if it's something I'm just going to have one of them in my closet, sometimes I just recycle those after I'm finished, um, you know, with all that, just for um, space. You know, I just don't have a ton of space. I mean, I save, you know, quite a few of them, but there are some that I, um, you know, that I, I may only have one of at a time that I will recycle the pattern. I'm really hoping I didn't do that to the Romana, but I may have. So I'm going to dig through my PDF pattern, see if I've got that coat. Um, otherwise, I'm going to have to print it. And, um, which I can do, but that's just annoying. Um, anyway, that is going to be on the docket for tonight. I've not done my wine yet, so I will do that here in a little bit and then come back and chat with you. But I just wanted to show you my hat. I'm very excited about it. I love the colors so much. <laughs> okay, I'll be back with the wine. So um, this is tonight's wine. It is um, uh, Caret. I'm not even gonna try it. I'm not. Even, I think it. I don't know. Here you go. <laughs> I've decided though I'm gonna quit doing the taste test at night because I'm wasting wine. Um, I have a couple that are still open and um, I'm not drinking it fast enough, and so it's starting to oxidize and not taste very good. So and I'm running out of recipes to cook with. <laughs> So I'm, we're just gonna talk about them. So this one, although I did, I finished off that whole half bottle last night with Jenny. Um, let's see, this is a quintessential uh, Vognier. This robust white features ripe melon and pineapple notes and a fresh citrus core. Classic in style, yet spiced with a Chilean flair and exotic appeal. So that sounds really good. So I'm gonna stick this one, it's a white. I'm gonna stick it in my fridge and um, get that nice and chilled and then um, you maybe have that with, um, you know, over a couple of nights or something with dinner. So that way I'm just not wasting the wine because <laughs> I can't drink that much. Um, and actually last night it was, I don't even really want a sip of wine. I just, it was, I drank too much last night. Um, oh my gosh, I have a, a puppy dog staring at me from outside. Hold on, let me let her back in. <laughs> Would you like to see the saddest thing? Look at her. <laughs> Let me in, Mom. Here she is. <laughs> okay, let's get our treat. Okay, anyway. <laughs> She's funny. <laughs> just look down and see her peeking through back through the window. Um, all right, so I think that I'm just going to leave it here tonight. I'm finishing up some laundry. Um, got to get my son here in a couple of hours from his friend's house. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna call it for tonight. It's been a very lazy Saturday and I, that was very much needed. I had a very busy week, um, just both with like housework things and stuff with my family and then also stuff for Tomcat Stitchery. It was just a very, very busy week. So it felt very good to have a nice lazy day. However, um, tomorrow I have my church group in the morning and then after that, I would love to come home, finish that recital shirt and then start on that Romana coat. Um, I've been watching Sean uh, on Kittish Behavior, her Vlogmas, and she's turned it into a coatmas, and she just finished her second coat, and that's inspiring me to make a coat. So, <laughs> and I've got a few I need to make, so um, that's good that I'm feeling that inspiration. So anyway, I think that that's probably what I'm going to do tomorrow. So um, obviously, you're watching this all in one fell swoop, so you'll know here soon enough, but I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Hello everyone. Happy Vlogmas Day. I was just with my watch 13. <laughs>
Okay, it's Sunday. Obviously, I've got makeup on, no lipstick, because I've been up at church with my um, fifth grade girls, and um, I have a mask on the whole time. So, for a while, I was wearing lipstick, and I'm like, that's so stupid. I'm literally just, because I mean, obviously, I'm sure you all are the same boat. You wear lipstick under a mask. If you're wearing it for any length of time, you just end up with lipstick all over your face. Um, so, I've just started... But I need something on my lips. I, that's why I wear a lot of lipstick normally, just because I need that, especially in the winter, that layer of um, moisturizer. So I've just started putting a really good um, lip balm on. <laughs> anyway, my face always just looks a little weird to me when I've got full makeup on, but without um, a bold lip or at least something on my lip. Anyway. Okay, so today, I tell you, I when it comes to my sewing, I am normally pretty much... This is what I want to make. I make a decision, you know, if I'm doing a sew the look or whatever, pick the pattern, that's what I make. I pretty much stick with it. I don't waffle a ton. Now, I may waffle like in the planning stages of the certain things, you know, go back and forth with what I want to do and change my mind. But I have been, with this red wool, so wishy-washy. And that is just so unlike me. Um, yeah, anyway, I found my Romana coat pattern and I was looking at it and I just, and then I'm looking at my... Um, inspiration picture. Now my inspiration picture is a much brighter red than what I'm going to be doing. Although I think my more, and I could, I could go bright red if I, I wanted to. I mean, obviously I'm wearing a very bright orangey red right now, and that is definitely in my color palette, but I'm more wanting, um, I mean, my wool is more this kind of, um, which is also one of my reds, this warmer brick red. Um, I guess you would call it cranberry, cranberry, call it cranberry, uh, cranberry red. I love my new hat so much. <laughs> Loving it so much. I need to trim. I got a stray, uh, stray piece there for my pom pom. Um, also, if you don't have a pom pom maker, get yourself a pom pom maker. It's so much fun. Anyway, um, I was going back to the inspiration picture, and I'll post um, a picture of what I'm talking about here. This red outfit, and um, I, I want a bigger lapel. I want a bigger lapel like this jacket has. Um, sorry, I'm looking at it on my computer here. I want a bigger lapel, and I want it to be looser. So the Romana has gorgeous shaping. It's a beautiful coat, and I highly recommend it. Again, I've made it before. Um, it's in a pale gray, and my daughter is kind of... I'm going to sneeze. My daughter's small. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> my daughter's a smaller size than I am by quite a bit, but um, on oversized things like coats, sometimes we can fudge a little bit. Um, things that aren't, like, super fitted because she's a, definitely a smaller size than I am. But um, this coat is not fitted, like it's more of an oversized coat. So I went back to the drawing board. I tell you, that coat is going to be the bamboo, then it's not going to be the bamboo. I'm still making the bamboo. I'm just still, I'm waiting for the fabric on that one. So I had this one in my stash. Simplicity 8797. And I was looking at it, and it's definitely just an oversized coat. Um, it's fully lined. But I think that this is going to be a better option, less tailoring. So, um, I mean, I'll probably put, well, I don't know if I'll even put a, it does not, hold on, I'm looking to see what it calls for. It does not even call for um, shoulder pads because it's kind of a, it's, it's a drop shoulder. So it's a drop shoulder coat, so you would not put, um, shoulder pads, you know, like you would for, like the Ramana, I put shoulder pads in, laser coats, that kind of thing. The coat that I'm making for the sew along, I'll be putting a shoulder pad in that one. Um, but this is more of a drop shoulder coat. And um, I bought this when the whole, I mean, the teddy bear coat thing is still pretty much a thing. I just love all the different, I mean, it's got all the different length options. That's basically only the difference between A, B, C, and D. D I think would be really cute, actually. <laughs> um, anyway, I think though I'm gonna go for A. So I think the only shaping it has is if you look at the back, it's got like the little band. I don't know, this screams very 80s, like um, Judd Nelson in Breakfast Club to me a little bit, like that oversized coat. But I'm kind of digging that. Like I think that that, that might be what I want to do. And I think I've got enough to do the longer version, the view A, because I have to shorten things anyway because of my um, height. And this just call, comes in like extra extra small, small, medium. Medium is a 14, 16, so that's what I'll make. I'm normally a 14 or a 16 in simplicity. Um, and I'm like a, normally a 14 in the big four, um, or like um, 
McCall's and Butterick and Vogue. Although the past couple of times I've made pants from them, I've made the 12. I made the size 12 in my McCall jeans and also in those 8007 because um, I did lose a little bit of weight. That's where I lose weight first is my lower half of my body, which is not typical for a woman. <laughs> it's very much the way a man loses weight. But anyway, um, so I think a medium will fit fine and there'll be very little fitting on this because it's just an oversized kind of shapeless coat. I think I've talked myself into this. So I think I could get, not that I'm looking for a quick project necessarily, but I feel like my creativity needs a little bit of a boost right now. Um, I'm feeling just overwhelmed just with, you know, everything with, you know, Christmas coming and, um, you know, stuff with the channel, just life in general right now. Like it can just get very, um, you can get in the thick of things very easily this time of year. And um, I think, but I need to create, <laughs> really need to create right now. So I think what I'm going to do is do that coat with that red wool. And then I'm going to be making the bamboo out of the wool that I'm waiting for. And then have you guys, so I am very tempted to join um, Gertie's Patreon. Um, I don't belong to any, pa I don't have memberships to any Patreons right now, but it intrigues me. And um, Gertie's Patreon, you get um, PDF patterns if you are at the $7 a month tier. And so what I'm thinking of doing, right now I have a Seamwork um, membership and I pay $6 a month for that. And I have since the beginning of Seamwork. But I can take, I think I can take a break off that. Like you can um, suspend your membership for a few months on that one. And I, t I have a ton of credits I haven't even like used up for that. And instead of spending $6 on that, I think I'm going to switch to doing $7 for Gertie's Patreon. So she just released a PDF for this gorgeous swing coat and has, um, let's see, she even has like a PDF for a bodice on the Stanwick skirt, which I've, of course I just bought in Black Friday. And I'm going to be using that for um, um, making the skirt for one of the sew the looks that I'm doing. But anyway, she had that swing coat, um, very 60s, very Miss Maisel, you know, Marvelous Miss Maisel love it absolutely love it totally want to make that I bet it's a fabric hog but then on her Instagram this week she posted a short version of the swing coat so it was like a hip length like high hip oh my gosh I'm like well I need that in my life right now and I actually have some Minerva fabric coming that I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it and that is 100% what it needs to be so um Anyway, I still am very much into making all of the coats. So I think I just need to, I think I just, you know, knowing that I need to make the sew along coat and then, um, you know, everything else I want to do. But with Christmas coming, I think I just need to dig into a project and just get going on things and let it go from there. Also, I want to thank you guys for all your suggestions on that crepe de chine fabric. I think it is going to become a pussy bow blouse um, type shirt. And I want something with a really voluminous sleeve. So Christy, I was watching Christy Russell's vlogmas. I think it was her vlogmas video, maybe day seven or something. Anyway, she, um, one of the outfits she had on, she had on, and she was talking about, you know, not saving your nice things for nice occasions, like wearing your nice stuff all the time. And she had this silk blouse on. Actually, it was really cool. Um, it was like this fabric was split. So it, this fabric was definitely almost like a very large stripe. But like half the shirt was one kind of pattern. The other half of the shirt was another kind of pattern. But I think it was all one fabric. It was just like maybe a big profile stripe. But then the way that the bow tied on the front of the shirt, it was one half of the bow was that was the opposite side. So like this half of the bow that was over here was this pattern of the shirt and this half of the bow was this pattern of the shirt. And she just had it on with jeans. And I was like, oh my God, that's what that crepe de chine. I mean, it's not the same um, look obviously because of the fabric, but I'm like, yeah, I think that's what that crepe de chine needs. It needs a big statement sleeve, like a big poofy sleeve. And it needs to be, I think a pussy bow blouse. And I have, like I've made the Itch to Stitch Zamora before um, and I love it. But um, this Crepe de Chine fabric is Minerva fabric for Minerva Maker uh, team that I do. And I've actually already done a post on the Zamora for Itch to Stitch. I made a, um, it was a cotton silk blend um, shirt still up in my closet. I still wear that because I had to make a cami to go underneath it because it was a little um, transparent. Love it though. Um, anyway, that's the Zamora. So I, I don't want to do the Zamora again. Um, but I liked the idea of that. And I think I've got a Vogue pattern um, that I've had forever. And I think it's still imprint. Um, that's, I do have to pick an imprint pattern for my Minerva makers. But um, it's got a whole bunch of different variations on the Pussy Bill blouse. And it does not have a statement sleeve. But I think that that would be very easy. I think I could hack that pattern pretty easily to what I want it to be. So we'll do that one here soon. Um, but anyway, I just really want to get started on this coat. 
And so I'm gonna pull out the simplicity pattern. We're gonna iron it. We're gonna cut out our pattern pieces and I'll probably just time-lapse you while I do it just because I think I just need a good win, project win. <laughs> I just need to create. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm also going to make a decision if I want to interline this coat with fleece or not. No, I'm not going to, not fleece, uh, flannel. I'm not going to because I'm going to use um, some Kashi lining for the inside of my coat. Let me go get some and I'll show you what that is. Hold on. Okay, so this is Kashi lining. Um, and I can't remember if I purchased this or if this was in my mentor Joyce's stash. <laughs> so it one or the other. Um, and it hasn't been washed. Ooh, this may be from my mentor Joyce's stash. I may need to wash this. Because I it's not surged, so I may want to go ahead and, and treat this. Okay, so this is what Kashi is. It is obviously the satin, like a poly satin on one side. And then on the inside, it's like a warm, um, a lot of times it's a flannel. This is not flannel. This must be my mentor Joyce's because this is almost like a wool. It's probably not wool. It's probably like acrylic interlining. So this will be the inside of the coat for the lining that, you know, you'll be able to slide things on super easily. But then this adds just an added layer of warmth um, to the inside of the coat. So yeah, with the Kashi lining, it will be, you know, slick side on one side. And then on the other, it will be flannel or some kind of a warmer um, insulating fabric. Um, and obviously this colorway, I, this must have been in my mentor's. So that means I'm going to need to wash it. But anyway, that is what Kashi lining is. Anyway, so that is the Kashi lining that I'm going to use for the inside of the coat. But I think I should, I think I should wash that. <laughs> I just want to go ahead and treat that. Um, a lot of people have asked me about how I treat my wool. I just stick the yardage into a dryer with a damp towel and that will steam treat it. And that's all I ever do. Oh, hold on. I'm being hollered at my daughter. I'm coming. <laughs> okay, hold on. So um, anyway, that's the lining I'm going to use. So I think I'm going to pop that in, but I'm actually just going to set the camera up on the tripod um, instead of my phone um, and get that. Um, yeah, I'm just going to kind of time lapse you and I'll pop in and say a few things. So this will not be a very comprehensive coat so along. Um, I'm anticipating this maybe take me today and then maybe tomorrow. Um, I need to put the buttons on my shirt too, but I'm going to put a buttonhole on this fabric. So I'll just wait and maybe do all that at the same time. So there we have it. Okay, I'm feeling good about things. <laughs> okay, I really quickly wanted to talk about interfacing for this jacket. So I'm not going whole hog on this one just because, um, just the nature of the, just excuse my children, they are playing a video game that's getting very heated in the background. <laughs> um, just because of the nature of this one, I'm not going to do a lot of interfacing and build up like on the front of the jacket or even like with the collar um, much. Just be, I mean, we'll do that with the sew along. Butter extra, oh an angry gadget with the Butterick um, coat for the sew along, but for this one, I'm not gonna do that. Um, anyway, I just wanna talk about interfacing. This is a lining piece, so this is the front lining. Um, I have taken two inches off the length of this, and I ended up making the size small because I was looking at the finished measurements that are on the pattern, and the finished bust, bust measurements for a medium are fit, is 50 inches, and my bust measurement is 39, 39 and a half. Oh my gosh, guys, hey, shh. My bust measurement's like 39, 39 and a half, kind of depending. Um, so that is like over, it's 11 inches of ease, which is a lot. And I think that the smaller size will fit better in my shoulders and stuff. And I think I'll still get oversized. So the small finish measurement's 46. So I think I'll still get the oversized by going with the small and then it'll fit me better in the shoulders. So that's what I've decided to do. Um, I've taken two inches off the length, but that's it. So then interfacing wise, um, it has you interfacing the facing, uh, the front facing, which I'll do. I'll do interface this piece. And then um, it doesn't have any interfacing on the back. However, and I have not marked this in, I am going to do a back stay on here. Um, so I am going to do, and I'll show you, I'm also going to interface my hems. So I have marked, uh, the hem allowance on this is an inch and a half, so I've marked up three inches so that when you do the one and a half inch um, hem, that, that will all be nice and interfaced. So I'm, I'm gonna trace that off. Um, but I'm also going to completely interface the back of my jacket because that's gonna help any pulling. 
and here we go. Um, another thing I was going to talk about is that I'm also, I'm going to come down here two inches on the underarm and then we will do like, I don't know, this is very arbitrary. Um, and then I'm just going to freehand. You want a nice curve like that. So I'll trace off this piece. So this will all get interfaced. Um, it helps to keep the back from stretching out. Now with a tailored coat, so your whole back arms, I obviously will have interfacing on it. Um, a lot of times they will do the same for the front, which we could do, but I just don't think that the coat needs it. Well, now I'm second, now I'm th rethinking myself. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm going to just leave the front as is. So I'm going to do the back stay. I'm going to do the hem. And then on the front piece, I'm just going to do the hem. Now, for like I was saying, for a tailored coat, a lot of times they will have um, the um, arm's eye of the front, like also. And you could. You could do something similar as I did to the back and just come up. You just want it above the bust. You don't want anything on your bust or have a line going across your bust. And unfortunately, this one does not have the bust point marked. But I'm just going to leave it as is because it is supposed to be oversized. But I, I will do some fusible stay tape in this arm side just to keep the front part, just to keep it nice and um, steady. And then, um, yeah, and then this is a one-piece sleeve, so we, we don't have to worry. The only interfacing I'm going to do on the one-piece sleeve is just the hem, and I've marked up two inches or three inches again here at the hem. I've shortened my sleeve by an inch and a half. Uh, you have this back tab that needs interfacing, so I'll interface that. There's the pocket. And then both your upper collar and your under collar calls for interfacing. I will do, um, I'm going to do the medium interfacing, the Palmer Pletch medium interfacing for everything, except, and for this upper collar, except for my under collar. My under collar, I'm actually going to use a lighter weight interfacing. Um, just so it doesn't get too bulky, which is very, that is very typical in tailored coats. You'll do like a knit interfacing or something less, um, on the under collar and technically actually under collars, they, this coat does actually have separate pieces, but you would cut this, um, you'd have a center back seam and you would cut this on the bias to help it roll nicely, which I could do. I could still do that. Just add a seam allowance and then cut this piece on the bias, um, which might be kind of nice and really it makes it roll better. So I might do that. I might cut that on, on the bias. Um, also with the tailored coat, you would have a roll line that would be drawn in, which is typically, you know, right here at the back. And then it would kind of come to nothing here at the, at the front. And that would be when you're wearing the coat and this part, you know, rolls back on itself. What, you know, that would cause that. I'm not going to mess with that on this one, but we will be doing that, I think, on the butterick coat. So stay tuned for that. So anyway, I just wanted to show you guys that. That's all the interfacing I'm going to be doing. So I'm just going to trace off some separate pieces um, for this stuff for the interfacing um, as I go. Okay, that's all I got. Mind. <laughs> I ended up doing a one for the front too. So as you can see, I've just drawn a line two inches um, and I've gone up and around in here. And I also want to note when I do um, cut out this interfacing, Anything that stops mid garment piece like this piece, I'm going to take my pinking shears and pink this edge so that when it gets fused on, it will not create a hard line. It'll be a soft, um, you won't be able to see it through the fabric. So I did want to make note on all of them, the hem face, the hem interfacing, all of these, um, I will, I will um, pink where it um, ends in the body of the, of the fabric. So, okay. Okay, I'm calling the coat making for the evening. <laughs> I was going to do some time lapses and my son and um, my husband and my kids were bringing stuff in from outside and so I was in the way. Anyway, I got everything cut out and everything is interfaced, which in coat making takes forever. There's the facing, it's all interfaced. There's the collar. That fabric still needs to get surged and washed. There's all of my coating. Everything has been, as you can see, been interfaced where I want to put the interfacing. I did cut my under collar on the bias and just added seam allowance there at the back um, to help that line nicely. So yes, everything will be all set and ready to go. Um, my lining I still need to cut. Here, let me flip you. 
So my lining still needs to get cut out. Um, and my, so my cardigan is done blocking. I need to now make a decision on the buttons and get those put on there. Um, it's a heavy son of a gun. But I just need to uh, stick my lining fabric has been washed. It just needs to be dried. Um, and then I need to get all the pieces cut out of the lining, which I could probably do tomorrow morning. Um, my kids are at school tomorrow, so I do have some work. I need to go to the grocery store and do that kind of thing. But then hopefully I can get down here and sew this coat. I don't know if I'll be able to finish it tomorrow, but probably definitely by Tuesday. I'm also trying to decide buttonhole. I may have to do a bum buttonhole. And if I do, I think I'm going to do bum buttonholes on my sister's coat. But I could go ahead and film the bum buttonhole on this coat because it would be the same. Obviously, I'll just show you guys how to do one. And then um, it's the same for the rest. <sighs> Decisions. There's only one button on the front of this coat. So it would be a good one to do a bum buttonhole on because... It's just the one. So yeah, maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll do that if I'm feeling adventurous. <laughs> There's other things I can do before I get to that, have to make that decision. Um, and then definitely get the buttons on my recital shirt tomorrow so we can get that all done. So anyway, I did have, I was filming some um, time lapse, but um, yes, they were coming down the stairs with big tables. They were pulling in all the outside furniture <laughs> and doing some landscape, uh, cutting out some of the landscaping and stuff. So anyway, I was in the way. So, uh, yeah, that's all I've got for now. I will be back for the, um, oh, <laughs> hello, tired eyes. I will be back for the advent calendar. We're going to go pick up some pizza for dinner. So I'll be back to say goodnight. All right. Okay, we just went and got pizza, and I uh, pulled out this, the conductor, it's a Bulgarian Merlot, which sounds very interesting, and I'm actually gonna have some with my pizza tonight. Um, let's see, aged for three months in French oak barrels, this Bulgarian red pours a dark red ruby color and unveils a fruity nose of dark berries and subtle floral notes. The conductor is a classic Merlot with a medium body and soft, fresh finish that hints of wild cherries, which sounds delicious. So I'm gonna pour myself an actual glass because I do love a Merlot. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Almost has a little spice to it. Very good. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Um, okay, so I'm going to eat dinner. I'm going to say goodnight right now. I'm going to eat dinner, and then I've got to just do some stuff around, um, just stuff getting ready for the week kind of type thing. So I will be back on here tomorrow for um, more coat sewing. Uh, and then also to finish that recital blouse, I'm gonna get those buttons on tomorrow as well. Okay, so that's all I've got for today. Hope you enjoyed following me around this weekend and I'll see you guys tomorrow, bye.